Hey there everybody and welcome to part 6 of the UPBGE tutorial series where I teach you how to use and make games with the Blender game engine. So far, uh, what we've made is we've made a pretty complicated, or really basic, uh, movement system for our character and when he falls off the platform he can respawn, but the problem is we don't really have any game yet, we just have a movement system. So, uh, in this part I want to add a bit more gaminess to our game. Uh, specifically, you're going to see I made a system. You're going to see we have all these cylinders over here. I want you to think of them as coins. I basically made a system where when you get close enough to a coin, it collects it. Now, we don't have like a coin counter or anything that tells us how many coins we have. Uh, but, uh, you know, this is kind of a game now. Like, it has some, like, interaction. Now, uh, some of the other stuff we need to do is make the, you know, coins, like, spin. And maybe uh, the whole thing can be a bit smoother. Uh, but... It's a game now, and we could have this have as many coins as possible, or as many as we want. So, uh, let me show you how to do this. So, where we left off, we have a character, shift to sprint, he can jump, fall off, respawn, whatever. We now need to add a second object. So, so far we've just basically been dealing with the platform and the cube. We need to add an object with a different logic tree uh, for the coin. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a cylinder. Uh, this could be any object, but I figure... Let's just like model a basic uh, coin. And of course we can change this later. What we care about is the logic, not necessarily the graphics or the look of it yet. Um, but just so we can see what's going on, uh, here is our coin and I'm gonna rotate it by 90 degrees and there it is, okay? Uh, we want our coin to follow the following rule. We're gonna say if it's close enough to our character, our cubes, if it's within some distance then go to the cube and disappear. So it's almost like it's uh, looking at the proximity and then it gets absorbed and then it disappears. And that, that's basically what a coin does. Uh, to do this, I'm gonna add another node tree. I'm gonna call this one coin. Well, I'm gonna try to spell it coin, not colon. And uh, for our cube, uh, what we can do is we can go back to our original node tree and call it character, just so we're organized. Um, so our coin, is uh, using the coin uh, node group. Make sure you're gonna see there's no game properties yet. Uh, when you assign a new uh, network, make, make sure to apply to selected. So now you can see uh, our node network, which is empty right now, is right here. Now, uh, when we play this game, uh, nothing's gonna happen. In fact, the coin doesn't have physics or anything like that. Now we could introduce physics, but for now I think it'd be easier if we just kind of, you know, put raw data into this. So how do we check if a coin is within a certain proximity or distance of our cube. Well, uh, we're caring about distance, so let's just type that in, and uh, we get two nodes. We get distance and check distance. Ideally, uh, check distance is gonna do what we want. It's gonna check the distance between two objects, and if it does that, uh, that conditional is gonna let us do something else. So, uh, what two distances A and B do we care about? Well, first of all, let me get position. And we, these are already setting and getting positions is already something we're kind of used to. Uh, what I want to do is I want to get position of itself. Remember when I click this, I'm saying reference yourself as the object, the coin. That's going to be position one. And then for position two, I can literally pick the cube character. Okay? And both of these are set to position global, which is very important. So... What it's going to do is on every frame, we're going to look at both of these uh, locations. We're going to check the distance, and if a certain condition is met, then we can do something over here. Uh, specifically, I want to check if the distance between A and B is less than some threshold, and that threshold can be 2. So in other words, uh, now when we play our game, we have our character moving. At a point like this, the uh, two locations are within a distance of 2, and then we want some action to happen. Uh, so one kind of action, just to show you uh, the kinds of things we can do, is we can set itself to be not visible. And now when we play this, what we expect is if these two objects are within some proximity, specifically a distance of two from each other, uh, we expect the coin to become invisible. But you can see I'm just running into the coin. Um, it's a thing with like physics and it's like a collision and it's not disappearing. Uh, what's going on here? Well, basically, uh, the coin has physics. Uh, we don't want it to have physics. We don't want it to be something you run into. And because it has physics, we can't necessarily get close enough to the coin uh, that we're, th we're within some distance. So just a bit of a technicality. I think our coin in physics should be set to no collision. And that may or may not solve the problem. Let's see. There you go. So you can see now we can actually approach the coin. And if we get close enough, it will disappear. 
Now, right now we have to basically hover over it. So I'm gonna increase the distance. So the larger the distance, uh, the larger its range of proximity. So now when we get twice as far away, uh, it's also going to hide. So again, the point is we are checking the distance between these two objects on every frame. And if a condition is met, then we execute an action. Now, I don't necessarily wanna make it invisible. I want the coin to go to the cube. Well, it's gonna be kinda of hard to say, like find the location of the cube and then every frame go like 10% of the distance. Luckily, uh, we have a node for this. I believe it is an object transformation. Uh, we should have a move to node. And what this does, as you expect, is it takes an object and moves it to a location, exactly what we want. So on this condition, we want our object, so reference yourself, uh, we want our coin to uh, move to the target location of the cube. So again, let me explain what's going on here. When this check distance condition is met, I want the object being itself, being the coin, to move to the cube position, and then we have a couple settings here. So let's see what happens. So now when we're within some distance, you're gonna see slowly it's crawling towards it. But if I go within uh, a further distance, it's gonna stop chasing. And then when we come closer, it's gonna start chasing again. So you can see how this is kind of what we want. And really this is a great way to make like AI uh, for other like NPC characters. Uh, but one, it's moving too slowly. Two, it's not disappearing. So a couple issues. Well, first of all, uh, with the move two, we can't, we can do more than just saying one object move to another. Uh, what we can say is it can go to a certain speed and stop at a certain distance. So let me increase the speed to four. So now it should go four times faster. So it's still like very slow, but you can see it's kind of doing what we expect it to. Uh, so I'm gonna take the distance, bring it up to 15. Again, you just play with these numbers and there you go. Uh, the coin goes to the character, but then when we move the character, it's, it kind of exists and it follows it. So the next step is after it goes to the, um, goes to the cube, uh, what we want it to do is to, I guess, disappear. And we could either do that by making it invisible or we literally want to get rid of it. Um, so there is a node for that as well. And I believe it's an object, uh, remove object. So we can spawn and we can remove objects. So again, uh, let's remove yourself. Uh, one, once this check distance condition is met, and I know I'm saying this over and over again, uh, we are going to move the coin to our cube at this speed. And then once that is done, we are going to remove our object. Now let's see if that works. I could see this running into an issue, but let's see. So it moves and then it's gone, okay? Now you might have an issue uh, with yours uh, if your stop at distance is set to zero. I believe that'll make a glitch, so let's see. It moves to the cube, uh, but then it keeps like existing, right? Why is that? Well, basically the stop distance is saying, I'm gonna move to the object until we're at a certain distance. So we can set the stop distance to two and let me just get rid of this remove object. So now it's gonna go up to the cube, but it's gonna stop when it's at a distance of two. So it can only get so close, okay? So if we set the stop distance to zero, it's hard for this condition to ever be met. It's never gonna be exactly on the cube. Uh, so it will never remove the object. So what I recommend is pick a number slightly above zero. This is up to you. And now it's gonna go to us and remove. Now, just for making the game look better, I wanna increase the distance to let's say seven. So it has a longer range. Maybe that was a bit too much. Let's set it to six. So you have to come within some proximity and then it uh, comes to you. And of course, like I said, this, these coins aren't rotating. They're not like adding any score counter, but uh, we now have a basic coin system. Um, one thing we could do is we could have the speed kind of like be variable as in it can like start slow and then speed up as it gets closer and closer and closer. Uh, we might add that, but I just want basic coin physics. Okay, so at this point, you're like, okay, we made a coin, but we have to do this again and again and again. No, we have our coin object inheriting this node network, so I can just keep duplicating this. Each one is gonna uh, use this node network and make sure that we use the reference self object. Uh, that is going to let each object reference its own, meaning that now when we play this, it's playable. And you could add coins all around the level. And now you can have like a thing with an objective, like you have to make a certain number of coins. So let me just kind of position these in a bit more of a game-like way. So we have this, and then maybe we could have some on the higher platform. And let's see what this looks like. A little hard to see from this angle. 
But you can see now it's uh, collect them all. And when we uh, respawn, uh, it doesn't like respawn the coins or anything, uh, which is the expected behavior. Um, so I think I'm rambling at this point. There are a couple more things we'd like to do with these coins, obviously, other than like make them look good. But j just in terms of the motion, there's other things I want to do. Uh, so I will leave that to the next part uh, where we're going to do that. Thank you for watching.